Hi students, today we are going to study one of the applications of congruences. How to find remainder when an integer is raised to some power and then divided by another integer. We will do some examples here. In the first example, we are asked to find the remainder when 8 to the power 230 is divided by 13. Now, this is a big number. So, neither manually we can do or when we use a calculator as the display space in a calculator is limited to 12 digits, it is not easy to calculate using a calculator also. Congruences in such a case come to our rescue. Now, here in this example, it means what is the smallest positive x such that when 8 to the power 230 is divided by 13, it gives us congruence to x or what x satisfies this congruence. You should always remember remainder is nothing but the smallest positive residue. So here we are looking for the smallest positive residue which is the remainder. Now in this case we can use the Euler's theorem as GCD of 8 and 13 is 1. The Euler's theorem states 8 to the power 5 of 13 will always be congruent to 1 mod 13. We know that 5 13 is 12 as 13 is a prime number. 5 of 13 will be p minus 1. So it is 12. Using this, we write our 8 to the power 230 as 8 to, two, 8 to the power 12 multiplied by 19, which gives us 298 plus 2. So the power of 8 is nothing but 230. We split it up as 8 to the power 12 raised to the power 19, this part of the equation, into 8 to the power 2. Now, from this, we know that our 8 to the power 12 will be congruent to 1. So, this whole term reduces to 1 multiplied by 8 square, which is nothing but 64. And 64 is congruent to 12 mod 13. So, the remainder is 12. Moving on to the next example. Here, we are given a sum of two terms. 12 to the power 3 plus 7 to the power 73 and we have to find the remainder when this term is divided by 11. Now let's start with the first term 12 to the power 3. We know that 12 is congruent to 1 mod of 11. 12 minus 1 will be 11 which is divisible by 11. If we raise both the sides to 3 we get 12 to the power 3 is congruent to 1 mod of 11. So this part is congruent to 1. Now let's move on to the next part, 7 to the power 73. Here also we can use the Euler's theorem as GCD of 7 and 11 is 1. So now this gives us 7 to the power 10 because 5 of 11 is 10 is congruent to 1 mod 11. Let's write 7 to the power 73 as 7 to the power 10 into 7 which is 70 plus 3. This gives us 73. So 7 to the power 10 raised to the power 7 gives us 7 to the power 70 multiplied by 7 to the power 3. We know that from Euler's theorem this whole thing will be congruent to 1. So, we are left with 7 to the power 3 which is congruent to 2 mod of 11. Let's go back to our sum. So, 12 to the power 3 plus 7 to the power 73 is nothing but congruent to 1 which we get from here plus 2 which we get from here. So, this gives us congruence to 3 mod of 11. We can see this is the smallest positive residue and hence the remainder is in example 3, we are asked to find the remainder when 3 to the power 3 to the power 3 is divided by 11. Now, such 
terms are known as towers of powers. We have to find the remainder. We can see that 3 to the power 3 to the power 3 is nothing but 3 to the power 27. 3 to the power 3 is 27 which we have written here. Let's see. 3 square we know is 9 and 9 will be congruent to minus 2 mod 11. If we raise both the sides to the power 4, we get 3 to the power 8 and minus 2 to the power 4 will be 16. 16 is congruent to 5 mod 11. Again raise it to the power 3, both the sides. We will get 3 to the power 24 is congruent to 125 mod 11, 5 q. And 125 will be congruent to 4 mod 11. So, going back to our term, 3 to the power 27. We know that 3 to the power 27 is nothing but 3 to the power 24 plus 3. If we rewrite it as 3 to the power 24 into 3 to the power 3, this side is congruent to 4. And 3 to the power 3 is 27. If we multiply, we will see it will be congruent to 20, which is further congruent to 9, 9 mod 11. Hence, the remainder when 3 to the power 3 to the power 3 is divided by 11 is 9. In example 4, we are asked to find the remainder when 2 to the power 2 to the power 5 plus 1 is divided by 641. 2 to the power 2 to the power 5. Now this is nothing but 2 to the power 32 as 2 to the power 5 is 32. We also observe 640 is congruent to minus 1 641 modulus of 641. 640 is nothing but 5 into 2 to the power 7. So this left hand side is 5 into 2 to the power 7 which is congruent to minus 1 mod of 641. If we raise both the sides to the power 4, we will get 5 to the power 4 is 625. So 2 to the power 7 is when raised to power 4 is 2 to the power 28 and this will give us 1. Now 625 is congruent to minus 16 mod 641. So that we write here and 2 to the power 28 we will just keep as it is congruent to 1 mod of 641. Write minus 16 as minus 2 to the power 4 and this is 2 to the power 28. Is congruent to 1 mod 641. Now this we can write as at the powers minus 2 to the power 32 is congruent to 1 mod of 641. This gives us 2 to the power 32 is congruent to minus 1 mod 641. We multiplied by minus 1 on both the sides. If you bring the minus 1 on the left hand side, you get 2 to the power 32 plus 1 is congruent to 0 mod of 641. Now this gives us that the remainder is 0. This is nothing but our Fermer's number. You know that Fermer's numbers are 2 to the power 2 to the power n plus 1. And when we take n value to 5, it is not a prime number. It gives us that this whole term is a composite number and 641 is one of the factors. The last question is find the remainder when 3 to the power 12 is divided by 6. Here it means that we have to find the smallest positive x such that 3 to the power 12 is congruent to x mod of 6 is satisfied. And x will be our remainder. We cannot use Euler's which you will observe as the GCD of 3 and 6 is 3. It's not 1. So what shall we do? We will use the Fermer's little theorem. And here we take our modulus to be 2. Let's write it like this. We know that from Fermer's little theorem, this will be satisfied. 3 to the power n minus 1 will always be congruent to 1 mod of 2. If you multiply by 3 all over, 
you will get 3 to the power n and this side will get 3 and this modulus becomes 6. The idea was to bring the modulus 6. Now we can see that if I give different values to n, my remainder will always remain 3. So here in our case n is 12. So from this statement 3 to the power 12 will always be congruent to 3 mod of 6. The remainder is always 3 whatever value of n you take. Thank you for watching.